Greetings, my dear friend. I am Raja Raja Chola Was, the great emperor of the Chola dynasty, who ruled from 985 to 1014 AD. Allow me to tell you my story, as I witnessed and experienced it. I was born in 947 AD, in the city of Tanjavur, in the southern part of India. My father was Parantaka Chola II, who was a great warrior and ruler. He had expanded our kingdom's boundaries and had established our dynasty's reputation as a powerful and wealthy kingdom. As a young prince, I was trained in warfare, politics, and administration. My father ensured that I was well-educated and well-prepared to become the future king of our dynasty. When I was thirty years old, my father passed away, and I ascended the throne as Raja Raja Chola Wust. One of my first decisions as a king was to expand our kingdom's territory. I knew that our dynasty's wealth and power came from trade, and I wanted to ensure that we had control over the major trade routes of the region. I launched a series of military campaigns, and within a few years, I had conquered several neighboring kingdoms. With the expansion of our kingdom's boundaries, our wealth also increased. I realized that our kingdom's prosperity depended on the effective management of our resources. So, I implemented several administrative reforms, such as the division of our kingdom into smaller administrative units, the appointment of efficient and honest officials, and the introduction of a taxation system that was fair and just. One of my major achievements as a king was the construction of the Brihadiswarar Temple, which is located in Thanjavur. This temple is considered one of the finest examples of Dravidian architecture, and it is a testament to the engineering and artistic skills of our people. I commissioned the construction of this temple to honor Lord Shiva, who was our dynasty's patron deity. The construction of the Brihadiswara temple was a massive undertaking, and it took several years to complete. I employed thousands of artisans, architects, and engineers who worked tirelessly to create a temple that would stand the test of time. The temple's main tower, which is over 200 feet tall, is made of a single piece of granite and weighs over 80 tons. The temple also features several beautiful sculptures and murals that depict scenes from our mythology. The construction of the Brihadiswara temple was not only a symbol of our devotion to Lord Shiva, but it was also a statement of our kingdom's power and wealth. The temple attracted traders, scholars, and artists from all over the world, who were impressed by its grandeur and magnificence. I also fostered the growth of literature and art during my reign. Our kingdom's literature and art were some of the finest in the region and I wanted to ensure that they continued to flourish. I patronized several poets, scholars, and artists who created some of the most beautiful works of literature and art of our time. During my reign, our kingdom's trade flourished. We had established trade links with several countries such as China, Arabia, and Southeast Asia. Our ships sailed across the seas, carrying silk, spices, and other goods, which were in great demand in other countries. Our merchants were known for their honesty and fair dealing, which earned them a reputation as some of the best traders in the region. With our kingdom's prosperity came the threat of invasion. Our neighboring kingdoms were envious of our wealth and power, and they wanted to take what we had. So I strengthened our army and navy, and I built several fortresses along our borders. I also established diplomatic relations with other kingdoms. As I reflect on my life and reign as the great emperor of the Chola dynasty, I am struck by how much the world has changed since my time. I believe that the key to any society's prosperity is good governance. A just and efficient government can ensure that resources are used wisely and fairly, and that the needs of all members of society are met. However, good governance requires more than just competent leaders. It requires active participation from all members of society. Each of us has a role to play in building a better world, and we must work together to create a society that is inclusive, equitable, and sustainable. In conclusion, my dear friends, I believe that these principles of good governance, education and culture, environmental stewardship, and peace and harmony are as important today as they were during my reign. As we navigate the complexities of our modern world, let us remember the lessons of the past and work together to build a better future. Let us continue to learn from each other and to work together towards creating a society that is just, equitable, and sustainable. May our shared humanity guide us towards a bright future.